in-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place. I'm Bill Drees with The Daily Memphian. We record this Thursday, May 2nd, 2024. We are joined by Shelby County Mayor Lee Harris, and this is On the Record. We're recording this the day after Mayor Harris presented a $1.6 billion county consolidated budget to the Shelby County Commission, his sixth since becoming county mayor in late 2018, a budget with no county property tax hike, a 6% pay raise for just about all county employees full and part-time that would take county government jobs to a minimum wage of $18 an hour. No new county positions would be created in this balanced budget, and there is no use of the county's reserve fund or fund balance. County funding for all seven of the county's public school systems would remain steady at $427 million. So first up, Mayor, uh, what kind of gap between revenues and expenses did this process start with, and and how did you avoid raising the county property tax rate of $3.39? Well, great to be with you. And I think the process started the same way it starts every year, although this year was particularly challenging. Um, We did have a gap, but we've had gaps in past years. This gap was very large. It was about a $60 million uh, gap when we started our budget team meetings and we evaluated every nook and cranny. We looked under every hood. Uh, and turned over every rock to try to find as much uh, as we can find in in terms of efficiencies and call savings. You already mentioned one of the ways that we were able to uh, reduce some of the expense by not entertaining uh, any new positions, even though there were a lot of worthwhile positions that were proposed, including from the administration. I've got a lot of things that I'd like to do that uh, I need to do, uh, but uh, this is just not the budget year to fund it. So that was one strategy. At the same time, we expect our projected growth to be a little bit better um, in terms of our estimates. And a lot of that has to do with the historical collections of the trustee, to be quite honestly. The trustees done a really great job of collecting revenue on the county's behalf. And given those historic uh, collection efforts, we feel pretty good about an enhanced projection this year. Uh, At the same time, we have did receive some new revenue over the course of my last six years from the uh, car registration fees. And so that gives us a little bit more options of how to deal with our debt service. So, you know, we worked really hard and, and turned out a, bur- a budget that has the highlights you've already described. And we're just really, you know, really pleased to give the employees a raise and, and hope that it stays in the budget. That's going to be a tough thing to keep in the budget. But we that's but we're but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to uh, lift up that issue mm-hmm. and hopefully we'll be able to generate enough momentum to keep the raises in the budget this year. Right. And and one other thing, and, and you talked about this in the uh, budget retreat that you had with the county commission, and that was the idea that, OK, you've got positions in the budget but those positions haven't been filled. So I I think in your budget address, you outlined that that your your proposal here would be uh, that 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 you not fund vacant positions if they've been vacant for 18 months. Was that the time period? That's right. So our position in this budget is exactly that. We've been talking about it with the county commission for many months. As you say, we've done retreats, we've done one-on-ones and try to explain the necessity of trying to right-size our budget by uh, repurposing is the word that finance is using, repurposing some of the resources that were used for our older positions. So the scalpel that we applied only, only applies to the positions that have been vacant for 18 months or longer. Some of them have been vacant for two years or many years. Some of them have never, ever been filled. (laughs) And so we have to hold county resources for those positions. And that's to the detriment of the budget as a whole. And that created the budget gap. So we had to right size in that sense. And once we right sized in that uh, with respect to that, 
We could navigate the increased contribution to our retirement plan. We could navigate the loss of the federal stimulus funds and all the other headwinds that we face. But keep in mind, even though we repurposed the 18 month and longer positions, all of our agencies and operations still have other positions to hire into. And we are more than able to advance new positions as needed. But we've said the long term ones, let's put those on a shelf for now or repurpose them as finance is saying, put them on a shelf for now and let's focus on all of the other positions that are vacant. Let's get people hired into those positions. And if any operation needs new positions after that, we'd be glad to pull those positions down off the shelf and um, you know put them back in play. But we've got to see a lot of hiring to get there first. And so, yes, we did do that among other things to try to re um re, reorient our budget or, or right size right size it any uh, what's the estimate on how many positions this is and 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 what the dollar figure is that you that you save with it well the number of vacant positions is hundreds and hundreds um so i'd have to take a look to see how many were older than 18 months um but some segment of that i mean i i, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how many but suffice it to say uh, a lot. There were a lot of those positions because there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of positions uh, that are vacant. And we left again, we left we left hundreds of p- positions intact and available. But it's just the ones that have been vacant for years that we said, hey, let's put those on the shelf and let's wait till the hiring picks up. And when hiring picks up, we'll we'll pull those positions down uh, as needed. OK, um, the dollar amount you quoted for the county's participation in the rebuilding of Regional One Health's campus went up uh, from three hundred fifty million dollars. That was the figure uh, at about this time last year uh, out of about a seven hundred million dollar project. It was estimated then to a county role of ballpark five hundred million dollars. What? Why the change? And since this is capital funding that we're talking about, I assume this is over several years, right? The project is a big project and the change does acknowledge that the project will take several years to complete. And so we've worked with our obviously finance, but also our outside consultants to better understand the project over the last several months. And given that the project is so gigantic, we want to make sure we're in a position to cash flow that project across the next 10 years. And so for that project alone, we have changed our budget approach to uh, highlight 10 years worth of spending. And so when we change our budget approach for that one single project to highlight 10 years worth of spending, which more accurately reflects what the project looks like, we not only aligned with, as I said, the project outlook, we were able to identify additional capacity to fund the earliest phases of the project. So the total in the budget that the commissioners were receiving the proposal is $505 million over 10 years. Um, which is enough to do all of uh, the very first phase. And so because of that change, we expect to see a kickoff, um, at least in terms of of announcement and so forth, we expect to see a kickoff sometime this summer. And so Regional One is working very, very energetically and excitedly uh, to get that construction project kicked off this summer. And of course, their partner in Harness is UT Health Science Center. They're also very excited. And so we continue to to, to work with them to to get to this kickoff of the summer. And that's also, by the way, the way we're going to build momentum. So the best way to draw down resources and partners, and we want to draw down additional resources from the state and our federal partners, is to have the project moving forward. And so we're going to move that project forward over the summer. And, um, you know, we're hopeful that, you know, we'll, we'll be able to, you know, get even more, um, um, you know, more excitement and get get that project going. And I think that we've talked about this before, but uh, uh, around the year 2026, a couple of years down the road, your debt capacity and the and county government and the debt capacity and city government, it opens up more capacity because you will have 
have paid off enough debt at that point from other projects that it allows you to do this. Is that accurate to say that? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, as you were delivering your budget address downtown this week, uh, Dr. Reginald Coopwood, the CEO of Regional One, was on behind the headlines talking about a number of topics, and this came up, and he said the state could not do its part of this funding at this time because the excise tax proposal the governor had took up too much of the discretionary spending that the state had to offer. So the state may join this at, at some point, and certainly you've indicated that you're still counting on that. Does that mean this is still a partnership? I mean, can the county do this alone? Will it have to do this alone? Well, the county's prepared to lead. We are. We think this is a very important project, and it's an important project for our community. And uh, to be quite honest, creating an academic medical center is an important project for our state. And so we think we've got a great case to be made. This was a very, very tough budget year at the state level. I, I worked at this item a little bit and I, you know, I've got, got a lot of experience there. And I, I I was surprised at how tough the budget year was. This is a this was a different experience than my experience when I was up there. Um, but we think we've got a great project. And so. We're going to continue to work Capitol Hill in Nashville, and we do think we will find uh, some support. We think we'll find it. We think we'll find it. I mean, I'm not going to put a time frame on it. This is a long term project. We think we'll find some support. We know we have support at the federal level. You know, I've certainly met with half of the federal delegation at this point, um, had some great meetings with the governor and the finance commissioner. And so we're going to socialize this more, raise more awareness and build our coalition, a statewide coalition. And uh, we think we'll get it done. I mean, we're in the phase right now of that, the statewide coalition part of this. So we've already, you know, the first phase of it was the regional one committee. We did that work that took several months. Um, Dr. Cooperwood, Dr. Buckley, UTL Science Center, we were all at the table. It was, it was a local committee uh, trying to figure out you know, uh, whether or not this project would, would really be transformative and just really vetting the project. So we did that for six or so months prior to the commission. That regional one committee is about to close down. And over the summer, we're launching our statewide effort, which is going to be a statewide coalition of individuals uh, to make the case that it's time for Tennessee to have an academic medical center, a public academic medical center, and West Tennessee, Memphis, uh, is the best place to cite it. Does regional one funding, the change there, what does that do to your timetable for the new schools in Frazier and Cordova? Well, I'm prepared to support the schools. Uh, right now, we've kept the funding consistent with every prior communication and discussion. So it's unchanged since the days of the mediation where we brokered the deal to build a new school in Cordova. And it's unchanged from the time when we successfully advanced the calls of the new Fraser High School. There is obviously a gap, right? The, the, the estimates from the school system are higher than what was budgeted and still remains in the budget. And so we're working to resolve that gap. Shelby County is prepared to invest additional resources in those schools, but we want to make sure that we are spending taxpayer money in a way that's responsible. And so, you know, the estimate was high. And so we've got to, we've got to spend some time betting that, but we're prepared to live up to our previous commitment and add more money as needed as things check out. Mm -hmm. And so the next stop on that, you know, working group, we've got a working group that's working on that is uh, we're going to explore lessons learned from the city of Lakeland. Uh, as you know, or may know, the city of Lakeland has just built a high school along the same size of, I think, the Cordova High School. And they have a lot of lessons they want to share about that project. And they're really, really proud of both the cost that they were able to keep the project uh, to and really proud of how quickly they were able to break ground and ultimately open up the school. So we're, we're meeting with them really, really soon. And, uh, you know, just we just got to we got to go through a process. So regional one, it's not it's not either or we want to do all, but we've got to be responsible with the money. And so, you know, we've gotten their estimate. It's high. And now we're betting that. And one of the things that I noticed in, in looking at how the school system put that together was that they included the cost of things like a sewer hook in and things like that. Are those normally costs that are estimated when you add up the bill for, for what the county or the city is going to pay. No, I think that's exactly right. So that's a big one, right? All the infrastructure needs. Arguably, it's a school system in a city, and arguably there's a case that probably has a resonance with a lot of folks that, you know, that infrastructure stuff is just stuff the city has to do. Uh, so we'll be talking with our counterparts over the city. We've got great relationships there uh, about what where they can plug in. And, you know, we, the school system has already made one presentation to the city, 
And uh, and so they're going to receive some resources. And so you know, we'll, we'll be working through that issue. Tell me about the, the pay raise, because I know you're going to get a lot of reaction to that. Why is it important for county employees to get a 6% raise two years after after you were able to get a 5% raise through the county commission and the value of being able to say county employees have, have, have this minimum wage level of $18 an hour? Well, it's really important for the county to lead the way by giving your employees uh, forth their talents and, and service to our community, and that has to be honored. It's just that we have a moral imperative to celebrate people that are working very hard, and we've got to do our part to to compensate them, right? There is dignity in, in work. The other reason is because when you lead on wages, we all benefit, right? All boats are lifted. I know sometimes people think that this is about What do they say? Crabs in a barrel that is zero sum and it's us versus them and this kind of thing. That's not true. If Shelby County starts talking about raises, other organizations will have to take notice. I mean, you've been around long enough and I've been driving a conversation around living wage for, you know, for quite a while. And, you know, at one point I was really working hard to drive a conversation around our college campuses and around the University of Memphis and, you know, its employees and some of them to make a living wage. Driving that conversation meant living wage, not just for the University of Memphis employees, it meant a living wage for Christian brothers who had to answer to their employees because of that conversation. It meant a living wage for roads. It meant a living wage for every college campus in town because they had to answer the question once we put it in the news. And so the same thing is true here. All, rise, a rising tide lifts all boats. And if Shelby County, as a large organization in town, is talking about an $18 minimum wage and talking about a 6% raise in light of inflation, every single working family in the community is going to benefit because it puts it on the agenda of many, many more employers. So we want to lead by example. In just terms of the specifics, I do want to say that the $18 minimum is for our lowest paid employees. So we do have some employees that don't get benefits. And so those are the ones that would see the minimum wage go up to $18. Mm-hmm. We have other employees that get benefits. And so their their, their wage structure is a little bit different. So they, they still would be under $18 in some cases. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Right. And to further clarify, at the top, I said just about every county employee full and part time would get the raise. The exception to that is county employees who have gotten a raise within 30 days of this. So is that 30 days from the passage of the budget or the July 1st start of the fiscal year? And that's that's kind of important because at Monday's county commission meeting, They'll be voting on pay raises that have been brought by the county clerk uh, in a resolution that was has been added on to the agenda. Yeah, I mean, the, the point there was just sort of the practical point that we're in the process, like literally right now, of making payroll changes and large payroll changes for folks in the public defender's office and folks in the district attorney's office that are county funded. And those payroll changes are large raises. I mean, huge raises, 40 percent, 50 percent. And so that's during our budget team meetings. And so those individuals that are currently getting 40 percent, 50 percent raises, it's just your public defenders, uh, many of them, not all of them, but many of the public defender personnel and and, and a few district attorney county, county funded positions. Those people are not in the mix for, for this particular raise because they are currently getting a raise right now. Um, so it's, it's not that many people, like I say, it's county funded district attorneys and it's public defenders or some of the public defenders. It's not it's not all the public defenders, not, or at least not all of her staff. Uh, everybody else would get it. So we have had people I, I misspoke, I think, at some point based on my notes. We have had people that got a raise in the, tw- in the last 12 months, probably that still would be participating. It's just the folks that are getting a raise right now in the budget cycle. And that's not that many people. Right. The, and the commission can change that. I mean, you know, but but we 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 did not propose that given where we are on those payroll changes. The other folks who say there's a proposal for the clerk and I did read about that, it would be the same thing. If we go into the system to change payroll for her employees, like right now or in the next two or three weeks, then they would be out of the mix for the next change unless the county commission gives other other instructions. Uh, and I think that's that's fair. You know, we want to give employees a raise, but we also want to save money where possible. And if we just ad- addressed an equity issue, like we just addressed it in the last few couple of weeks, last two or three weeks here, if we just addressed it, then um, then, you know, we want to save those resources so we can make sure we fund other parts of, of, of county government and other challenges that are unaddressed. Uh, final question, Mayor. I I did not know that Shelby County government had a choir 
until Monday's budget presentation. Uh, tell me about tell me about opening your budget address with a choir singing and singing beautifully, I might add. <laughs> oh, our choir is outstanding and they travel around the community uh, using their talents through music to lift up this community. It's the most remarkable thing. And they practice all the time. <laughs> they almost never sing the same song twice. So they're constantly uh, well, working together to deliver, you know, this kind of ministry uh, through song. And it's really incredible to watch. You know, we gave them a gift. We gave them some, some T-shirts as it says Shelby County Choir, but they travel all around. They all um, I think all of them work for community services. And I know they did it all on their own. They just decided one day they were going to start practicing after work and, and you know, doing this through song. And uh, so they're all over county government. And I didn't know if the commissioners had heard them. I think most of the commissioners had not had a chance to hear them. And so we wanted to make sure we celebrated them because one of the themes was taking care of people, taking care of our employees. And so we wanted to put those employees front and center and let the commissioners uh, see uh, who it is in Shelby County government that is helping us to serve this community. Well, it was a it was a very interesting start to the budget season. <laughs> so we've been talking with Mayor Harris uh, one day into the 2024 county budget season with much more to come. I'm Bill Drees. This has been On the Record.